Hey guys, it's Julia and welcome back to Julia Art. Today I thought it would be fun to show you guys some of my most used tools and craft supplies for miniature making. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. So first off on my list I have the tools. So the first tool that I want to show you guys is this saw and miter box. Um, I think mine was like in between $15 and $20, but it's really nice because it has different slots in it where you can put your saw in between those different lines and you can get different angles. I've used this so many times. This edge hangs off the table. You don't usually see it in my videos, but I do use this a lot to cut wooden dowels and balsa wood and popsicle sticks and round dowels and square dowels and all those kinds of things like that. So I definitely recommend if you're making miniatures that you get a um, miniature miter box with the saw. Now these came together in the same set. This might sound kind of weird, but I have a small pair of dog nail cutting scissors. Scissors? I don't even know what these are. Pliers? They have a round cutting area in the middle there. Um, now these are really good for cutting dowels and toothpicks and round wooden items I found. Um, it just gives a cleaner, cleaner cut. Um, I just got these really cheaply at the, the Daiso, which you'll probably hear me talking about that a lot. It's like the Japanese version of a dollar store. So I just got these for a dollar and yeah, I don't use them super often, but when I do use them, they're really helpful. Next, I have these bigger wire cutters and I use these on pretty much anything but wire. I use these on wood, I use these on cardboard, I use these on dowels and toothpicks and um, popsicle sticks, all that kind of stuff. I just find that for me, trying to cut wood with an X-Acto knife or something like that is just way too time consuming. So either if I want to cut wood, I usually use the miter box or I use these wire cutters. Now sometimes when you cut with these, you have to sand down the edges of what you're um, of what you just cut because the edges will be a little bit raw but I find that they cut cleaner than some of the other things that I've tried. My wire cutters come in handy when I'm making miniatures. I use these every time I craft pretty much so. The next two things kind of go together. The first one I have is this C-clip that I use to hold things together when they're drying. I don't use it super often but I, it does have times when it comes in handy. I also got this from Daiso for a dollar and there's also the bigger version of that which is this What's it called? A vise? Is this a vise? I think it is. Anyway, it like goes onto your table, it hooks onto the edge of your table, and then you can use this part to tighten this. Um, and you can use it to hold on to smaller items or bigger items while you're painting them or while you're gluing them to hold them together, things like that. If you do carving stuff, you could probably use this to hold the pieces together while you do carving stuff. Um, I find this helpful because I only have one hand, if you haven't noticed and uh, this helps me be able to hold pieces together while I am crafting if they're hard for me to hold on to. Yeah, I don't use them super often, but when I do, they're nice to have around. So the next thing that kind of goes with the clamps that I just showed you is blue tack or sticky tack or whatever this stuff is called. Um, I use this when I am crafting and the pieces are too small. A lot of times when I'm painting stuff, um, it's hard for me to hold on to stuff with my arm and paint it at the same time. So I'll put a little bit of this down on the table and then I'll stick whatever I'm trying to paint or hold on to on top of the blue tack and then I will paint it. I use this quite a lot. You probably see me use it in my videos if you see my miniature videos. Okay, next one, pretty basic. I have a um, X-Acto knife. So I use this a lot for cutting cardboard and the boards that I use for the base of my miniatures and a lot of other materials like that. So. Yeah, I have a lot of different variety of cutting utensils that I use, um, and this is one of them. Okay, this might be pretty self-explanatory, but I have a ruler. And this ruler is really nice because it's clear, and so you can see, you can like line up what you're doing with the lines on the ruler, so you can see clearly that the line is straight. And I like this long one so that I can measure out longer stuff. But also pretty self-explanatory. But paint brushes. Part of this that I especially wanted to show you was for miniature making, I went to the um, Daiso again. So I found these tiny little nail painting brushes. A pack of 10 of these for a dollar. Um, 
at Daiso and I use them a lot to paint like miniature figures or if I'm trying to paint really small details on something um, these are really helpful because some other paint brushes are just too big too bulky You can't get the level of detail that you want and so these are really helpful Okay, next up we have tweezers now tweezers are very helpful for when you're like gluing small things together or if you're trying to hold pieces together while you glue or while you while it sets um, Tweezers are very helpful. Okay, the next one is a pretty big one and I haven't had a chance to use it a whole lot yet But have when I have used it, I've been very happy with it. This is a rotary tool um, or Dremel kit as it's sometimes called it has a lot of different pieces in it And it has this tool that you can stick them into and pretty much you can use this for Sanding you can use it for um, making holes in wood just like engraving wood or um, Giving it kind of details that you want, but I have used of it I really like it and if you do more like intricate wooden miniature stuff this might be helpful for you um, I would recommend getting the one with the plug instead of one with batteries because the batteries may make it so that it's not as powerful and it might not be able to do what you want it to do. Okay, now one of my favorite tools of this whole video I'm about to show you. I've had a lot of trial and error to try to find the right one of this and I think I finally have. This is my Lynn Lily by Sherbonder hot glue gun. I love this hot glue gun because it is it has a cord um, but the hot glue gun is able to be removed from the stand and you can use this I don't know how long you can use this without putting it back on the stand I usually just use it a little bit put it back and it recharges the hot glue gun But it has a on and off switch which is really nice and it has a light back there to show you if it's on or not And it also has this dripping um, glue drip silicone um, mat on the top so if glue does drip it gets on there although I haven't really noticed um, glue dripping a lot it's like my favorite that I've ever tried and um, yeah I really recommend you getting this glue gun also very positive part it's so pretty these are my favorite colors and I've always wanted a pretty hot glue gun and I didn't think it was possible but this is like my favorite colors rolled into a glue gun and so I'm really happy with it I was actually gifted this one and I'm very happy with it so thank you so much you know who you are if you're watching this. Thank you for gifting this to me. Um, I use it like every time I make stuff. Hey guys, sorry, I just wanted to jump in here and say something that I forgot to say and that is that this hot glue gun is a precision hot glue gun which means that the tip is smaller and it um, releases a smaller amount of glue at a time uh, which I think is important for making miniatures. I just wanted to put that in there so that you guys know. And now that you know, I'm going to send you back to the normal clip. So the Sherbonder Lynn Lily glue gun is definitely one of my favorite crafting tools. And tacky glue. I use this for gluing wood. I use it for gluing plastic. I use it for gluing um, pretty much anything. It's premium all-purpose adhesive. I usually leave it facing this way, facing down so that the glue will come out smoother. Tacky glue is very helpful when I have the patience to use it instead of my glue gun. Okay, next I have double-sided tape. Now I use double-sided tape a lot when I'm gluing um, paper onto the backs of my displays. If you don't have double-sided tape, you could also use this um, glue tape. Um, if you don't have glue tape, you could obviously just use double-sided tape, but I use um, one of these or both of these in gluing together things for my miniatures. Next, I have some light adhesive washi tape. And it's important that it's light adhesive because I use this when I'm gluing together the walls of my miniature builds and I put a strip um, on both of the walls to hold them together while they dry and um, if the adhesive is too strong when you go take it off it'll rip the paper off the back of your your display um, or it'll get stuck in the glue so this um, you kind of have to figure out which one is going to work for you. Gorilla Glue. Now I don't really use Gorilla Glue that often but um, I think I'm going to start using it more because um, I want my builds to be extra sturdy and this glue is definitely the strongest glue that I've found. Um, it definitely takes the longest to dry. You have to leave it for like half a day or um, sometimes 24 hours for it to fully harden and sometimes I don't have the patience or the um, the ability to be able to hold the pieces together for that long for them to be able to like cure together so usually i just use hot glue but when i want to make sure that the um bond is really strong on something like if something's kind of fragile or something like that i will use gorilla glue and i'll just let it sit for longer to make sure that it's really 
strong. Okay, next for the wood, I don't have that much in this wood section, but um, I thought that I would just tell you guys some of the wood that I use the most. So I really like balsa wood. I think I tore off the thing that said how thick this is, but you can just see here, it's like this, this thin. It's very easy to cut through, it's very light, which I like. It doesn't take a lot of force to cut through this. So I use this balsa wood a lot for making furniture um, and stuff like that. Other wood that I like is I get this wood pile fun. It's this pack of assorted um, like rectangle wood pieces. And I use these a lot, like I have three packs of these because I use them a lot. Um, and yeah, they're just really helpful for making drawers. For making chairs for making pretty much anything that you can think of next I really like to use these wooden coffee stirs um, as you can see they come with like a rounded or like a straight tip instead of a rounded tip like popsicle sticks so these are a lot quicker to use um, for projects where you need a flat edge and these are really nice like um, width they're not super wide but they're like I find that these are good size um, for a lot of the projects that I need them for. Okay, next I use fake plants and like greenery for pretty much all of the things that I make, I would say, at least all the builds, because I do put like plants in my builds. And so I have fake plants. This kind of looks like a cactus kind of thing. So I just cut those off and actually stick those in beads, which I'll tell you about later. Um, but I have just a bunch of different kinds of um, fake plants and then I also get these detachable grass bushes from Hobby Lobby so they have these grass bushes and then they also have um, these flower bushes which these ones I haven't opened yet but these come in handy I have some that I'm still using these are really helpful when you're making like gardens or when you're trying to make flower pots or something like that. It's really hard, I found, to try to make these kind of flower plants um, from scratch. I've tried and it was a fail. Okay, next up, we're getting into the resin category. Now, I use resin um, to make different miniature things because I find it easier, but some of these tips you could also use with clay. Um, I don't have a clay category in this video because I haven't really perfected or learned that much about how to work with clay when making miniatures. If you guys have any um, requests for clay that I could use to make miniatures, like that won't burn in the oven or that air dries nicely, um, please leave it in the comments down below. I'd love to learn more about what kind of clay is good for miniature making. But for now, let's talk about resin. Okay, so first off in the resin category, obviously there's going to be resin. Um, I just use the normal like hard resin. I don't mix it together myself, the two parts. Um, I just use the pre-made ready to go resin. And you have to use a UV light to harden this. It doesn't harden by itself. So here is my UV light. It's very small. It's like the one that you use for nails, I think. Um, but I think it was like either seven to twenty dollars, something like that. Maybe it was around thirty or forty dollars maybe, which seems like a lot but when you're using it for such small projects you can get a lot out of this and I definitely recommend just investing in it and um, because you will use it a lot if you're like me I got this pack of coloring dyes resin dyes um, that comes in handy and then when you put the resin in the mold or whatever you're using if you use a lighter hold it over the resin to get the bubbles out. This is really helpful because you don't want your project to be full of bubbles and everything. So you can just kind of watch them pop and then you can use the UV light over it to harden it. Now safety, wow, that looks awful. <laughs> uh, I use these when using my resin UV light so that my eyes don't get affected. I don't have them here right now, but also if you want to use gloves, um, while working with resin, some people have allergic reactions to resin um, and so it would be good to use gloves to prevent any kind of irritation. Okay, next for my favorite part of resin, I think, are the molds. Now you can get so many different kinds of resin molds and I found just recently that you can get miniature resin molds which have changed part of the miniature making game for me. So the brand of molds I use for my resin um, 
miniature projects is clay jewelry line this is what the package looks like um, I have cups they have three different sizes I usually use the smallest of them for my scale I've got little jars if you could see that picture up there plates and mugs like round mugs I use them a lot it definitely saves money to buy the molds and make them yourself than it would to buy like you know miniature cups and it's very hard to find miniature cups and plates and um jars and stuff like that in my opinion and so to be able to make them yourself make them whatever color you want make them clear make them what size you want is really nice so i definitely recommend getting some of these molds and this is the best brand that i found now if you can't find the right size mold or if you have something for example a little miniature cup or something that you have already that you bought but you only have one of them but you want to have more of them you can get the silicone mold making kit now i got this also at a daiso um but i know you can get them at craft stores where you just mix these two parts together and then you stick whatever you want to have a mold of into the kind of like putty and then you let it sit for a while you take it out you take the the cup out and then you can use that with clay or resin and you have your own custom mold so i just recently found these at the store and i'm really excited about them so next i have kind of a random category these are just things that i turn to um when i make miniatures like random supplies i have makeup sponges and i use these for couches i use them for cushions for pillows for beds um for all those kind of things they're really easy to cut you can make them whatever size you want now this one might be kind of obvious but fabric fabric is very helpful when making miniatures because you can make things like bedspreads pillows curtains anything like that um but something about miniatures is that you don't need a lot of fabric in order to make stuff which is really nice but the other thing is that um you want fabrics that have smaller prints usually like this has a smaller print but I just think that it makes it look more realistic, like it's actually a tiny little miniature pillow if the, um, the patterns are smaller. Next I have these pipettes, which um, if you've seen a video of mine in the past, I use these to make um, soda bottles. I'll link that video in the description down below. But I use these things to make a lot of things like the soda bottles, or like you can cut this end and make like a little sauce bottle. Now this next one I wanted to show you because I use them a lot but at the same time I don't know if you can get them anywhere besides Daiso and so if you don't have a Daiso nearby I don't know if you can um, get these but they are little glass balls that have a hole in the top and I use these for things like lights. Um, I, I'm thinking of making like a fish tank out of this. As you can see, I use these for my gumball machines and a lot of other things like that. So if you can get your hand on something like this or something similar to this, they also sometimes have square ones um, that I used in my candy store build to make the candy display area. Sometimes they also come in even smaller ones. I think I made a snow globe out of one of these once. So those are very helpful. So the next thing is beads. Now, like I said earlier, I was going to talk to you guys about beads. Um, I love beads because you, you can use them as vases and you can really switch up the kind of beads that you use in order to change the look of a room. I love just going to the bead section of a craft store and just looking on what's on sale and also looking at what kind of room I'm building and what kind of colors I want. And you can really just experiment with the different colors and then stick the fake plants that I showed you earlier inside the beads to make really nice plants. Um, yeah. And the last thing that I have for this video for today, these little glass jars with the cork lid. These come in handy for a lot of different things. I used a bunch of these in my, again, in my candy store video. Now, one thing that I almost forgot to include in this video, which I use a lot, is my printer with my colored ink. I like using the printer to cut off pictures um, of backings, like of patterned floors or of wallpaper 
or um, stuff like that for my builds like book covers to make books or magazines if you don't have a printer or colored ink you can also just buy like scrapbook paper and use that as wallpaper and flooring and stuff but if you want to have more control over what your room looks like and want to be able to print your own images I suggest getting a printer and colored ink so that is the end of today's video I hope that whether you make miniatures or whether you just like watching crafting videos I hope that you enjoyed this video and maybe it gave you some ideas of supplies or tools to use in your crafting. Um, I really enjoyed making this video. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, please comment down below and I will do my best to make that for you. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!